This is task nine from the second AAT sample assessment for business tax. Task nine is about trading losses. So we've got quite a bit of information about uh, a particular business. So let's just scroll down a moment to have a look at the requirements. So we need to explain the loss options available to each partner for the 20,000 loss. They are each allocated for the year 2024 to 25 including a recommendation for the most appropriate option. Okay, we don't need to complete any calculations, but we should use numbers to support our response. So we've got a text box, um, but there's also a, a couple of true false statements as well to deal with afterwards. So there's quite a lot of information which we need to be able to digest here. Um, and we're going to be sort of drawing out a timeline to help us understand what's going on, because we can see we've got four different years here in, included in the question. So before we look at the detail, uh, let's just remind ourselves how we can deal with our tax losses. They are dealt with in the reference material. So here we're looking at section seven about trading losses and we're looking at partnerships, aren't we, uh, in this question. Um, so we're looking at this column. So there is a choice that we can carry the losses forward against future profits of the same trade. OK. Um, or we can carry them, or sorry, offset the losses against the current year or carry them back. Okay. And then we can use that against total income in the current or previous year in any order. And this is one of the complications with trading losses for individuals and partners that we can do the offsetting in any order we like. There's lots of flexibility here, but it does mean it's a bit more complicated. But if we do that, though, we will not be able to preserve our personal allowance. So basically the loss wipes out the income. And if there were a personal allowance in place and being used, then potentially we'd waste that. If we scroll down, we see there's also some guidance here for the opening year loss relief and terminal loss relief, which may or may not apply in this case. We will see in a moment. So let's start having a look at the information provided. So Harry and James have run a profit-making partnership for many years, making profits of 40,000 per annum, which they shared equally. Tony joined the partnership on the 6th of April, 22, and the three partners agreed to share profits equally. James left the partnership on the 5th of April, 25. Harry and Tony will share profits equally in future periods. And then we've got the profits of the partnership for three of the years and projected profits in the last year. So that's quite a complicated set of information there. So let's just draw this out to see what is really going on. So here's a simple timeline with the tax years drawn on. And then the question told us that Tony joined the partnership on the 6th of April 22. So that is at the beginning of the 22-23 tax year. So this is where Tony joins. We're also told on the 5th of April 25, that's when James left the partnership. So James is a partner up until that moment. And then for the third person, so Harry is just there all the time. OK, so let's go look at the question again to see if we've got more information. So we know that they made profits of 40,000 per annum, but then we've got some specific numbers for these other years. So let's put those numbers into our timeline as well. And remember, they share the profits and losses equally. So there is a profit of 40,000 in the 21-22 year, which would be shared equally between James and Harry. And then there was 45,000 
in the 22-23 year, which is going to be shared equally between the three partners. And remember, we've got to work this out to be able to do our sort of our loss relief properly. And then there was 18,000 in the next year, which is again shared equally between the three partners. And then we've got our 60,000 loss in 24-25, which again needs to be applied equally between the three partners. And then they're expecting a 30,000 profit in the next year. Again, that's now getting split between the two remaining partners. Okay, so we've put those in and we've got a bit more information about. So Harry has property income of 6,000 per annum. And then for Tony, until the 5th of April 22, Tony was employed on an annual salary of 40,000 per annum with no other income. And then for James, James starts a new employment earning 70,000. He has no other income. So let's put these on our diagram as well. So Harry is earning 6,000 of property income every year. Let's make sure that, yeah, that's a loss, isn't it, there? And then Tony was earning 40,000 salary prior to joining the partnership. And then James is going to be earning 70,000 in his new job. So what we need to do then in terms of our loss relief is work out, well, what are we going to do with those losses? Remembering we can carry them forward or apply against the current year or apply it against a prior year. So uh, I think it's probably better to have a look at uh, Harry to begin with. Okay, Harry's going to be the easiest of the three because there's going to be no opening rules or closing rules or terminal reef yeah, because Tony and James both have some special rules. So let's just look at Harry to begin with. So what Harry could do is use loss relief against the current year income. So use the 20,000 loss in the 24-25 year to wipe out the 6,000 property income. But there's no point in doing that, is there? Because that 6,000 property income would be covered by personal allowance. So there's no tax to pay in that 24-25 tax year anyway. So what's the point of removing that 6,000 income? So Harry could also carry it back one year and use it against our total income from the previous year. But again, there's no point in doing that either because the personal allowance is 12,570. So both types of income would be covered by personal allowance in the prior year. So again, there's no point in carrying it back. So what would be best for Harry then is to carry forward the losses into the next year. So we would use 15,000 of the loss to, to wipe that out. And then 6,000 of the property income would be uh, used with, with the, the personal allowance. So Harry would pay no tax in the 25, 26 year. And there would still be 5,000 worth of losses to carry forward into the 26, 27 year. So we can see that some of the personal allowance was be wasted. Yeah, there's 12,570 of personal allowance. 6,000 of that would be used with the property income, but the remaining 6,570 would be wasted. Remember that the carry forward rules can only apply for income of the same trade, so we wouldn't be applying it against the property income. OK, well, let's have a look at Tony next. So here we're looking at Tony's loss of 20,000 and what should we do with it? Well, is there any point in applying it against the current year profits? Well, no, because there is no current year profit, is there? So uh, we're not going to use that. And similarly, there's no point carrying it back one year because there's only 6,000 of profits there and that would be covered by the personal allowance. So we'd be wasting that personal allowance if we carried it back. 
Uh, what about carrying it forward? So yes, we could apply it against the £15,000 here, so there would be no tax to pay in the 25-26 year. But remember, most of that 15000 would be covered by personal allowance, so we would be wasting the personal allowance, so that's not ideal either. But as Tony just joined the partnership a few years ago, could we use the opening, re opening year lost relief? Let's have a look. So for the opening year loss relief, we can apply the losses against total income of the previous three tax years on a first in first out basis. Okay, so if opted for losses would be used to reduce total income as much as possible each year, and cannot be restricted to preserve the personal allowance. So if we do do this, then potentially be wasting the personal allowance. So we could use that 20,000 loss and offset it against income from the previous three tax years on a first in, first out basis. So it would make sense therefore that we use the 20,000 loss and offset it against the 40,000 income from the 21-22 tax year. That would leave Tony with 20,000 income, which would be reduced further by the personal allowance in that year. So none of the personal allowance would be wasted, and Tony would be able to apply for a refund and get some money paid back to him by HMRC. Okay, well, what about James now? So James has that 20,000 loss. So similarly to uh, Harry, there is no other income in the 24-25 tax year to offset it against. And we don't want to carry it back to 23-24 because that's covered by the personal allowance anyway. So how about carrying it forward to the next year? Well, no, we can't do that because we can only carry it forward and offset against income from the same trade and this is a new set of income from a you know, salary for this new job so we cannot offset it against the 70,000. So what can we do then? Well James has left the business so let's think about the terminal loss relief. So with terminal loss relief we can offset it against trading profits of the previous three years on a last in first out basis. So here are the previous three years. So we, we, we have to apply this against the, the previous three years. So that means we would offset 6,000 of the loss against the 23-24 income. So removing that completely, but that does mean that we would lose the personal allowance there. And then the other 14,000 of the loss would be offset against the 15,000 income in the 22-23 year. So there would still be 1,000 of profits to be taxed, although this would be covered by the personal allowance. So that means that we would waste the personal allowance completely in 23-24 and waste quite a lot of it in the 22-23 year as well. So remember we need to do this on a last in first out basis so we're going in this order in contrast with the uh, with the Tony losses where we'd have to do that on a first in first out basis. And we used it all in the first year in that case, didn't we? So there's quite a lot to talk about there in this question. And notice that there are only six marks available. So you don't need to cover everything that we've talked about in our video now. But hopefully we've gone through it step by step in enough detail for you to understand the different types of loss relief for the partners. Okay, there's still a little bit to do for this question though. So let's have a look at this. So we have some true false statements here. If a company has brought forward losses from the accounting period ended 31st of July 23, these can be offset against profits of the same trade only. 
So let's look at section seven of the reference materials again, but now we're looking at a company, aren't we? Not a partner. So we saw earlier that for the partner, when we're carrying forward losses, they need to be offset against income from the same trade. But for a company that doesn't apply, we can set it against total profits in future periods. It doesn't have to be for the same trade only. So the answer to this is false. And then if a company has losses and qualifying charitable donations in the accounting period ended 30th of June 24, it cannot restrict any current year claim for losses to ensure that relief for the qualifying charitable donations is not wasted. So thinking about the current year now in the reference materials, it tells us that, yeah, we can elect to set the trading losses against current periods, again, total profits, but the qualifying charitable donations will remain unrelieved. So that means they would be wasted. So in this question, it was saying it cannot restrict any current year claims. So that is true. Yeah, we cannot restrict the, gate, the, 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 the offsetting to make sure we can still use those donations 